The pointed tips of Eleuthera and the adjacent island, named Current, are separated by a 100 meter wide cut. Water flows through the cut at up to 10 knots, so it's best to navigate the cut around slack tide, ideally with a small amount of current against you to improve your maneuverability. Unfortunately, we were still having engine issues, so we decided to sail through the cut with a small amount of current with us. We just made it through the current. The cut. The cut. Current cut. Oh. <laughs> and the Too current. bad. We're doing uh, only two knots through the water, but uh, yeah. Heck, you just get me. Yeah. At about six over. Over, over, over the ground. Spanish Wells is aptly named as it was the island in which Spanish ships would replenish their water supply before returning to Europe. The first settlers on the island were shipwrecked on the outlying reef called the Devil's Backbone. In later years, the population grew as loyalists relocated to Spanish Wells. The streets are lined with picturesque, colorful houses and lovely gardens. We were too cheap to pay for mooring balls, so we ended up anchoring on the east side of Spanish Wells, just outside the channel. We were joined by several friends, including Jenna Bird, Laura Bell, St. Nick, and Barefoot Adventures. So we just helped our friends on Laura Bell. They had become grounded, and we helped them get off the reef. And there are lots of sandbanks around here, and it's, uh, it's super, super easy to get, to get grounded. So Greg had this great idea where he was like, give me a, a halyard, and we'll pull you off to the side so that the boat will heal. And we only have a little like, eight horsepower outboard, but it was enough, it worked. But then it was really funny because we were still attached to their halyard. We couldn't let go and they started backing up really rapidly. So we were like, chasing after them, holding the halyard in our hands. And we couldn't just release the halyard because then their, their halyard would go up their, up their mast. So we needed to, uh, <laughs> to stay with them. <laughs> Anyways, so we give it back and uh, they're all good. I think they're anchored up now. And it's gonna be a party in Spanish Wells. Yeah. Lots of friends here. Excited. On the north side of Spanish Wells, we stumbled upon a conch nursery. Conch are large, deliciously edible sea snails. These herbivores live in seagrass beds and take three to four years to reach sexual maturity. The adult animal has a very large, solid and heavy shell with knob-like spines on the shoulder and a flared outer lip. The flared lip is absent in younger animals and that characteristic is used to determine if they are mature enough to harvest. Unfortunately, we came across some juvenile conch that had been prematurely harvested, made apparent by the punctured shell. Most fishermen use this method to remove the animal as it breaks the suction between the foot and the shell. What just happened before the raining? Oh, okay, so 
I went to swim on the anchor, and on the way back I made some friends. Three little conch. Well, big conchs actually. Um, I wasn't even looking for them. It's, uh, there's lots of sea life around here, it's really good. We're gonna check to make sure we're not in some sort of marine reserve. We had to put them in two different buckets. Okay. But they have beautiful shells. So you can see the claw sticking out there. And hopefully this time I'll actually videotape when we take it out. There are a few ways to liberate a conch from its shell, and we wanted to keep the shells intact so we could make conch horns. We first tried the spirits approach, but unfortunately all we ended up doing was getting the conch drunk and they remained firmly in their shells, so we tried another approach. We are going to get this conch out by freezing it. We'll leave it in there for eight hours. Eight hours later. Now we'll thaw him out in some fresh water. And we'll be able to fly him out easily. Later. And now I'm just going to work it out. We had a little trouble and the claw came off when I was trying to ease it out. So we would guide it with a couple of forks and I think we're coming along now. And here she is. Here's the conch with the shell intact. It's a really weird looking creature. So the white fleshy part is what we're gonna eat. We're gonna cut off everything else around it. We'll clean it up a bit more later. Another option is to tie a rope around the claw and just let gravity do its work. The next morning we suffered through thunderstorms with gusts up to 45 knots. It's rainy and our friends on Jennebird went into town and then it started raining again and they just realized that they left it. one of their hatches open. So I'm gonna go over now and close it. And I'm gonna use it as an excuse for my shower. Greg's trying to pump out faster than the rain is coming in. I don't think it's working. This is our water collecting bucket. We collect rainwater when it comes and we do laundry. We're trying to coax our third conch out of its shell. We had pretty good luck with the first one. Terrible luck with the second one. Let's see if the third one's a charm. It's such a weird looking creature. Now we get the shell and yeah. we can make a horn out of it. Yeah, I'll go rinse out the shell. <laughs> We're attempting to make conch fritters. So we have two and a half um, chopped up conch. It's a half because we kind of butchered the one getting out of the shell. Um, two cups of flour few teaspoons of baking soda, or baking powder, salt, garlic, seasoning. Um, Alicia from Jenna Bird is chopping up some green pepper. And we got this recipe from Gail and Bill off of Spiro Sapula. <laughs> so, Gail, we'll see if we do it justice. Fingers crossed. Once all the ingredients are assembled, mix everything together and add enough water to make a thick paste. Drop spoonfuls into hot oil and fry until golden. That's our finished hot fritter batter. That's about ours. Still more. Yeah, we're still making a little bit of power. Yeah, I think so. I'm sitting under a palm tree, trying to get a video uploaded. It's uh, it's slow, but it's uh, 
nowhere else to be and it's beautiful here. We celebrated our last day in Spanish Wells at Buddha's with our buddy boat friends. Yeah, it's 6am and uh, we're about to head off from Spanish Wells in the Luthra to the Abacos. It's a 50 nautical mile day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, get an early start. We're back on the east coast of the states heading north to Canada and you can see our current location on our live map link in the description. Thanks for watching!